Welcome to 501 Crossroads, your show all about nonprofits and the people that make the mission happen. I'm Marjorie Moore, President and CEO of Mind's Eye, and my personal mission is to make nonprofits stronger by identifying and fixing the rubs that so often come up between people and the mission. My fabulous co-host, the nonprofit ninja, Natalie Jablonski, is here. That's right. Specializing in helping nonprofits maximize their time, talent, and resources to achieve organizational greatness. Hey, Natalie. Hey, Marjorie. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. This is kind of cool and exciting. It is. This is a special edition. Special edition. This is our... 100th, 100th episode. episode and cheers. Of course we have wine. Cheers. We have special wine. We have what they call a champagne. Like a champagne. Yes, yes, with the bubbles. It's fancy and hopefully we don't burp on the air. That would be uh, that would be not ladylike. It would not be fancy at all. No, it would not. <laughs> but this is delicious. I'm so glad. And we had cake. Mm-hmm. We had uh, chocolate cake in the shape of a heart and then uh we tore it into three pieces and you and I and Mike enjoyed a piece. It was t- very tasty. Actually, it was really Good chocolate cake, too. You know, I worked really hard at buying that. Yeah, and, I, I could tell. I could and, tell. And it was putting, I saw the sticker. It was making it and then putting it in that little plastic container and putting mm-hmm. that sticker from the grocery store that really sold it. Well, you know when somebody bakes so good that like they, they're like, you know what? They're not going to believe that I made this myself. Right. So I'm going to put this in grocery packaging so I don't even have to like Don't think that I didn't it. think that I didn't think about <laughs> getting a plate and sliding <laughs> on that plate and then putting saran wrap and going, look what I made. But I have known people I tr- who've done that. Every time I try to pull that off, people like can i have your recipe and i'm like no it's a secret family recipe you can't you can't possibly have it i mean you don't have this mold so no no it's it's a special particular and i broke the mold as soon as i was done just like making you and i the mold oh. was broken oh perfect tears <laughs> so what do you want to talk about on our 100th episode well i think that we should talk about when it's time to when knowing when it's time to move on or take a break yeah or make a change yeah that's a good because you know a lot of our audience members uh, who reach out to us tell us that they're members of board of directors for mm-hmm. nonprofits, volunteering uh, for volunteering some of our staff serve on mm-hmm. uh, capa- capacity of a committee or mm-hmm. board members and, and certainly there... some of our staff work as staff people that they do on time to time uh, and they also look at new opportunities mm-hmm. that happens occasionally it does and so i think this is a good opportunity for us to just discuss well, what that looks like and, and signs to look at and why mm-hmm. why it's good to do that you know there's a reason that we have term limits on most boards yep it is smart boards able... yes yeah, smart <laughs> boards and those of you who don't have them you should be jotting that little note down uh, but it's a great opportunity for you to look and see What could possibly be next for you and what could be Mm -hmm. possibly next for the organization that you're serving in as a volunteer or as a staffer? You know, change. People fear change. I love change. I think it is so much fun to shake things up and see what happens. I remember when I first started at Mind's Eye, my my boss at the time, because I was a baby volunteer coordinator, um, had a sign above his desk because we were going through a lot of change and turmoil that said, nobody likes change but a a wet baby. And I'd always go in there and go, except, and me too. And I'm like, okay, baby volunteer coordinator. And fair enough. Fair enough. I was usually not wet. I was, I don't like umbrellas, but... I can stay out of the rain. Well, that's good. So, that's, yeah, that's a weird tangent. That's terribly <laughs> weird. We're gonna, this is what Let's happens when you give Marjorie champagne, which is why we only do it on special occasions like our 100th episode. Uh, so g- good signs to know that uh, change is, is you're ready for change. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe for me, the first uh, sign that I know is uh, I'm starting to think about um, attending that meeting or going to that event or uh, doing that activity and uh, becomes dreading, even though mm-hmm. it's something I enjoy. Yeah. That's that's a big sign for me. That's um, a huge sign. I think that's one of the signs. So I, I think our listeners will remember we we talked to Beth Cantor, who did the Happy Healthy, Happy, Healthy Nonprofit, and yes. she had that burnout guide. And I'm pretty sure something like that was in that yeah. like burnout questionnaire that, like, seriously, guys, if you think – actually, I think – it's a good exercise for everything you're doing to see, like, are you burnt out? Because for right. me, like, burnout is a sign for me that, okay, something's got to change. Right. And change doesn't mean dramatic, I have to quit and leave the country and, and own a small surf shop in Hawaii, although that does sound fun. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, <laughs> it could just mean that you need to take a break or you need to shift your way of thinking or you need to take a sabbatical and take a few months off, mm-hmm. whatever that might look like. Depending Move your on... desk across the room? Yes. You know, moving furniture and rearranging things can be huge. It also mm-hmm. helps you clean off your desk because what? apparently underneath those papers, there is some sort of surface that is cleanable. Oh, wait. So it's not just held up by more papers? It's not. It's You have to dig deeper. Oh. It's, it's kind of like a seven-layer dip. 
You got to <laughs> just keep on going down. See, I never get past the olives because I don't oh, like olives. So, see? like, usually just, like, get to the guacamole and maybe the fried green, free fried beans. And Your analogies tonight. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, this is no, this is a, a trial and error on the champagne, folks, and we are realizing the error, yep. perhaps, by giving. So, we'll just give Marjorie more. That's that's my thing. That sounds like a good plan. What's, uh, as I pour <laughs> up your glass, tell me, uh, what do you think one of the signs are for you that you uh, are looking forward to change or needing change? So, um, so I also love change, as I mentioned. So for me, a lot of times it is when I, um, just feel tired of mm. like the whole thing, like yeah. just kind of like, you know, get that whole, I'm doing it and I kind of feel a little bit ugh or doing a piece of it. And I'm like, ugh. Mm-hmm. um, when I think about trying to find a way to pay somebody else to do something that I'm doing, <laughs> that's when I know that I'm probably tired of doing it. <laughs> well, and, and that's another great point. Change can be delegation. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was so many times now I know that some of you are laughing and I can actually hear you laughing across the country because you're like, delegate to who? There's mm-hmm. me or there's me and two people. Like, who am I going to delegate to? Um, so the question is that, you know, we've got board, we've got volunteers and and if you can't delegate to someone, is it necessary? Mm-hmm. Is it still something that you have to do? And if not, then maybe a different type of change is needed. But yeah. delegation can be nice. It can empower your staff and your volunteers in a new way, especially if it's something that uh, I like to use the analogy of shoveling the driveway during a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. So the first time you go out to shovel the driveway, it takes a lot more effort. Mm-hmm. You have to figure out exactly where the edges of the driveway are and kind of put it through and you're, it's exhausting. But once you get through the first time, if you every other day just go out and you shovel, you already have the lines, you know where you're at, it's lighter, it's faster, it's quicker, right? So you're moving to Wisconsin. Uh, no, ma'am, <laughs> never, ever, uh, ever. Nothing against y'all Wisconsin people. Love your cheese, uh, love to visit your cows, but and not... And your beer. And your, oh, and your beer cheese soup. Yeah. Okay, yes. And we're on a food episode tonight also. <laughs> this will be on the Food Network later, apparently. Um, but no, no, we will not be going to Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> but my point being that if it's something that you've already shoveled the driveway on, mm-hmm. you could potentially pass it off to someone else easier because the heavy lifting's been done. Mm-hmm. You've already got a plan. You've got a, a plan of action. You have a deadline. You have formats. You have press releases that have already been written. You just need to tweak them. Those That's what I mean by shoveling the driveway. So yeah. um, delegation may have seemed more difficult before, but potentially it's easier now. Mm-hmm. So that's a good point. Um, something else I think that we need to look at with regards to change is, it reminds me of the quote that Meg Ryan used uh, in... Uh, some uh, you've got mail. Remember mm-hmm. that movie? Yes. And they're sitting. Oh, man, I miss those days. Love when that email movie. Was that exciting? Ah, oh, <laughs> love that movie. Uh, but they're sitting in the they're sitting at the corner in the restaurant, uh, and her and her uh, uh, boyfriend at the time were discussing their future, and they realized that uh, their future is not going to be together. Mm-hmm. And he asked her if there's someone else, and her response is, uh, "No, no, there's some, there's no, there's no one else, but there is the hope." for someone else, I think is to paraphrase mm. her, her response. And I think that's the same about change. You don't have to necessarily have something else lined up. You know, anytime you go to leave something, people are like, what are you going to do next? Where are you going next? What are you going to do? How are you going to fill that mm-hmm. slot of time or that commitment? Uh, you don't have to have something else to fill it, but opening yourself up for something new gives you that chance to be able to be open to your entire world and your environment, putting that openness out there for the possibility of what could be next that you may have missed had you not opened yourself up. So I think that's really important. I like that. Yeah. Because it is that b- being open to possibilities is I think half of the battle. And when you have your schedule so full or when you're, you're being bogged down by something that you're just not full all in on. Right. You, it's hard to have that time. So for me, one of the things that I notice when like, I'm kind of, you know, needing a change is that I notice that I'm not doing my best work on something. Um, I noticed that I'm, Ooh, I'm yeah. getting it done just to get it done, Yeah, get through it, even if I enjoy it. But like, sometimes it's like, man, okay, I get through this so I can do the next thing. And like, it becomes a thing on the check off to do list. Yeah. And, uh, so that is one thing that like, I noticed, like maybe I'm just not doing the social media like I want to do, or maybe I'm not writing as well as I want to, things like that. And I'm like, huh, I could do better. And I think there's something to be said for longevity in the workforce. You know, the average uh, executive director, I think the study I read uh, is three to five years, mm-hmm. uh, and you do development see directors, development like directors, months. or yeah, even shorter. Come right? on, you guys, they're together. They're looking for the <laughs> utopia of fundraising. If you find it, come get me and let me know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the idea behind the change, I think, sometimes is that uh, that uneasiness, that unrestfulness, that you need something different, need something more. And I think that's why we see a lot of staffing change and staffing mm-hmm. turnover, particularly in the nonprofit sector. Um, because they want to open themselves up for that something new and mm-hmm. uh, they feel like they've uh, been there and done that. 
and they're looking for that next step and that next vision. And, you know, it's hard though, because when you are on a board or when you're on a volunteer or when you're on uh, a staff, you have to be very careful on who you let that information go to, but Mm -hmm. yet you want to make sure people know that you're open and available. So it's like, Hey, my, my uh, term is never ending on this board. I'd like to figure out how to get off of it. I don't want to hurt the executive director's feelings. But yet I really want to tell some of my friends that I'm looking for a new Mm -hmm. position on a different board, and I don't need to get back to the executive director of my (laughs) current organization, um, that I'm thinking of leaving her because I don't want her to panic. Uh, So those can be tricky conversations. Yeah. Uh, And honesty and openness, I think, is is really undervalued sometimes. mm. And just being able to say to somebody like, hey, like this thing isn't working for me anymore, and being on the other side of that and receiving that information gracefully and like understanding where the other person is and not thinking first about, okay, well, my gosh, what am I going to do? Like thinking, oh my gosh, what have they been doing for so long? It's it's really important, I think. And I think that that's, you see a lot of organizations when a staff member leaves, uh, you see them being retaliated against or, you know, being like the the devil of the organization because they've left. Yes. And everything gets blamed on them, by the way. It's kind of like my kid when she leaves for college. But she she doesn't have to be there, but by all means, it's Courtney's fault. (laughs) I mean, we all say, I don't know why the Tupperware containers are all messed up. It's Courtney's fault. She probably messed those up whenever we were at home, you know. (laughs) But the same goes with her former colleagues. It's like, Mm -hmm. why are these files messed up? Well, Marjorie probably didn't fix them before she left. Well, mm-hmm. why isn't this taken care of? Well, Mike said he was going to do that before he left, and he left us in a lurch. Again, you know how Mike was. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can go from being hero to zero just from walking out the door. Mm-hmm. And that goes for board members, for volunteers, for staff. The list goes on. Yeah. So uh, change is difficult on the front end, but it's also difficult in the back end. Mm-hmm. I had a uh, colleague of mine who uh, we knew each other through different work associations and such, uh, left his uh, left his je- job in the fall to take a new opportunity A great career move for him, uh, good longevity at the uh, current location, uh, but it was just time. It was time. It was time for him to grow and very exciting for him. Well, we recently had a big event and uh, that original uh, employer had this big event that he was used to being a part of and he was coming back as a guest and he calls me and he says, hey, he said, Nellie, he said, "I, I know I'm not your client, but I wondered if you could give me a little advice because I'm a little nervous going back. I've never sat in the audience. I've never just sat back and observed. I don't know what to expect. And um, can you give me advice of what this experience is going to be like, you know, because for change. And uh, so I said, absolutely. And I, now if I've been through it before, but I've seen other people go through mm-hmm. it and kind of coach them through it. And, you know, we talked about some of those challenges that you're going to want to go and fix everything and you need to sit, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have like this out of body experience, uh, knowing that you're now watching it in a whole different way. And it's going to feel a little awkward and comfortable and, and they're going to do things differently. They're going to do did. things that you're thinking, Oh, why would you do that? If I was here, dot, dot, dot. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and being, a, being self-aware that other people are going to potentially be uncomfortable until you make them comfortable. Mm-hmm. So they're going to see you and they're going to say, John, hi, how mm-hmm. have you been? Like, they don't know what to talk about. So break the ice easier. Let them know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's great to be back and I'm looking forward to this and so good to see you. Make give them some topics of comfort because they're trying to figure out how to welcome you back and not make it awkward. Mm-hmm. So now, what do you feel about like, uh, especially like maybe in an ED or board president position, coming back, you know, a couple of years, a year later to an organization that you helmed for a while? Like, I've always kind of wondered that. I was really, really blessed because my former ED, when I took over. You know, I invited him to things and he said, you know what? No, it's your organization now. Mm-hmm. And I just loved that he did that because I felt like um, I, I didn't have to compete with his legacy. Right. But I've had former employees come back, you know, especially big personality ones. And, you know, everybody just kind of glommed onto them and, you know, asked them questions about how they'd be doing different things that we're doing now. And of course they, part of the reason they left was because, you know, maybe, maybe they didn't agree or right. things like that, or they were also burnt out. Right. Um, so like, that's always, I think that's really tricky. Um, it's a really tricky line to, to cross somewhere between like, I'm never going to see you again. And I'll see you next Thursday at that event. Yeah. <laughs> so in in my opinion, that should be something to, to, that's discussed in the exit interview. Mm. So if it is something, if you're parting on a relationship that terms aren't necessarily the, um, the way that you would have hoped they would be mm-hmm. uh, setting some expectations up uh, with regards to their departure uh, that we valued everything that you did for us while you're here. Uh <laughs> whether that was true or not. We're excited (laughs) to give you the opportunity to be successful somewhere else, as I like to say. Uh, But uh, let's talk about in the future, you are going to be out by as a donor. We'll be Mm -hmm. uh, potentially sending you these things and these things, things, things. And we appreciate that because we want you to do Mm -hmm. this. However, we're going to respectfully request that you wait 
X amount of months or X amount of time period before you come back and interact with our staff because this has been a sensitive time for them. Yeah. Um, and if you have a exit, if you have an exit interview agreement that you write, mm. that would be something that you could put in that particular That's document. Really good idea. It's a good way to manage it, you know, as opposed to everyone hiding behind it. Yeah. Um, well, so, and I think you, and when you're in a role of uh, management or any kind of fundraising role at all, it becomes even more tricky because you're dealing with like a public public view, donors, right? things like that. So that becomes kind of tricky. And so. sometimes the public doesn't know what the private knows. No. And they think, the public thinks, yay, this person's coming back. We love that person. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, oh, please don't tell everybody what, because now there's no <laughs> like punitive action for mm -hmm. me to tell, you know, things that they are not supposed to know or know. Yeah. And because uh, of office politics and the sensitivity mm -hmm. of some of those things that they may know because they sat in on board meetings or staff meetings or finance meetings or whatever that might be. And um, yeah, there's definite that conversation. Now, what happens when that exit conversation is not a conversation, but more of a, hi, today will be your last day with the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a resignation and release form that you can put together that can be part of your resignation and release mm -hmm. form. Uh, if you don't get to that point, uh, because it's uh, a little more um, pointed, shall mm -hmm. we say, uh, remember, y no one has the right to attend any of your events. Mm -hmm. You have the uh, privilege of inviting people to come. Um, and just because it's open to the public doesn't mean that it has to be open to everyone. That is true. I know in an organization I used to work for, we we had, the, it was a public campus. And uh, when somebody left, um, we would get a letter that would say, or an email that would say something to the effect of, this person is welcome as a guest. Or... If you see this person's car with license plates X Y Z, please uh, call HR. Call or immediately, right? Yes. <laughs> so you kind of knew what was on the up and up, mm -hmm. and that's where you really utilize your board of directors. You used your board chairman or your mm -hmm. board president, depending on your title, or your fund development chairman. That doesn't have to have to come from staffing. Mm -hmm. That can easily be a conversation if you have a great relationship with your board leadership to be able to say, "So, uh, John, our SVP for our uh, big golf tournament." Um, and you and I know, of course, the, the decision that was made from an operations lens, and we need to let John know that, uh, we do not appreciate his attendance and we need to give him his check back and maybe you could mm -hmm. give him a call and we'll send him the letter and then they can have that respect of, it's not awkward because you were his leader, mm -hmm. that it's the, a board member that's actually having that conversation. And, yeah. Uh, oh, that's, that, that's a good idea. That, that whole delegation thing. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how like that it. rolls. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we're kind of talking about like maybe being released or terminated or something like that. But I think that there's something to be said for being able to look at those tea leaves and, you know, whether knowing it's time to move on sometimes means knowing when somebody else thinks it's time for you to move on. Yes, yes. And that can be very different even if you're not ready for that conversation. Those are mm -hmm. tough conversations to start, too. They are. Um, I had to do that with a, a colleague uh, in the past uh, few years. Uh, I remember specifically just asking, so how are things going and how do you, do you feel like you're being successful in your role? And there was just the, uh, absolutely, everything's fine. And the sun is always shining. And the grass is always green. And I was like, oh, okay, well then let me show you what I, here, wear these glasses. Let me mm -hmm. show you what I see. Yeah. Um, those are tougher conversations. Yeah. Tougher to have. And, and really take a lot of uh, self-awareness to, to pick up on some of the, the knowledge that is being dropped on you. Um, and I think it's really important to do that. Absolutely. I agree. So we've talked a little bit about um, staff uh, leaving, departures, board mm -hmm. members leave. What about volunteers? Oh, so, man. I know. We love our volunteers. They are uh, the backbone of a lot of what we do. They're the resources that we love but we can't afford, which is why they're volunteering. <laughs> uh, so when you have those crucial volunteers that we love and adore uh, and they say to you, uh, I have grandchildren and I'm changing my volunteer status because I want to spend more time with my grandchildren mm -hmm. or my husband's retired. And so I've been retired and now we're going to move to some warm state. That's not Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> those types of conversations I've had to have with volunteers. Those are tough. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's tough to, it's, it's sad because you want to celebrate everything they've done and you want them to feel warm and fuzzy about their decision because you know that most volunteers are really committed to the mission. Otherwise, they wouldn't be spending right. their free time doing this. But the other side, you really would have grasped your, their ankle and hold on tight and lay mm -hmm. on the floor until they agree to stay forever. Exactly. <laughs> but they probably won't. They probably um, won't. I found that, that somebody volunteering out of guilt is, is almost as bad as a nonprofit employee volunteering. Oh, there you go. That's, yeah. So you got to be <laughs> careful with that. And, you know, the reality is if you cultivate it right, just like an exit interview with the staff, you cultivate it right, they can turn it into a great champion of yours, even from afar, mm -hmm. continue uh, to be a loyal supporter, either through their time, talent, or treasure, mm -hmm. um, continue to be a great ambassador for you in the community. So 
uh, handling that with real care, I think, is is important. Volunteers uh, uh, are, are fantastic. I, what about the volunteers that you get to have a strategic conversation with because you're giving them the opportunity to volunteer somewhere else? I am so glad that I have not had to have that conversation Those in years because I have delegated that conversation to other people. Oh, look at you, um, sly dog. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it, it is one of the harder things because you, you have people that are really committed to your mission. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're committed to themselves. They're um, committed to the mission of their personal mm -hmm. uh, contributions to the organization. Yeah. So that can be kind of tricky. Um, but I think that a lot of times it, it's really being honest with them about what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, Transparency is always the best policy, regardless yeah. of how awkward and uncomfortable it is. In the end, it wins every time. Mm -hmm. I'm a true believer of that. Um, yeah, that's tough. I've I've had to be on that side of of the table, and often it's a deer in the headlights look of what well, you can't you can't fire me. I'm a volunteer. Oh yes, we can. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? You delegate that. You delegate that role. What are you talking about? I've done it enough. I fired a nun who was a volunteer once. Oh, I'm glad that I'm you sitting wanna, on the other side yeah, of the radio you know studio how tough because I am? of that's lightning strikes. I want to be on this side with my champagne watching the show. I have done my time. <laughs> Bless your heart. Let's just say, and all remember that was Marjorie that said that. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are going to be sending follow up emails or mm -hmm. uh, any other sort of communication, those those are going to address to Marjorie. <laughs> um, but you know those the, the, that's tough. It's tough yeah. to have that crucial conversation, as I like to call them, with someone who is uh, providing time, talent, and treasure to your organization for nothing, asking for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. um, uh, financially, let's mm -hmm. just say they may be asking for things that are unreasonable, which is why the conversation starting. But, um, you know, there are rules and regulations that need to be followed. Volunteers need to follow those the same way. And that can be difficult. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're giving them the opportunity for change and, and, and that's okay. Um, you just have to make sure like anything else, you got your ducks in a row and, um, that it's for, for the best of the organization. Yeah. And I'm in an industry where a lot of times, you know, you're, you're, you come in and you're fantastic and you're fantastic for a long time, but I, I work in an industry that's, it's very voice based. The voice is the muscle, um, or comprised of muscles. I was, that, I was wondering how that worked out. Yeah, that that age, just like legs and arms and feet oh. do. And um, sometimes people that came in and they were fantastic twenty years ago, you know, when they're eighty five, oh. maybe not so good. Their voice I, is had, not in the yeah. same shape it was in. Although that time I've then. had people who've had that problem at fifty five. So you know, oh, I mean, right? you know, so sometimes your 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 voice changes over time, you, different things. But when quality becomes the problem, not yeah. the personality, nothing like that. But when quality comes the problem, that's always been the one that's toughest for me because yeah. it, I have to remember that my clients come first and nothing's right. more important than like the clients being satisfied and, right. and getting what they need. But man, I like this person. I, I like know. this person a lot. So the question is then, can you, can you find another role for them? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that, is that a possibility? And sometimes it is not mm -hmm. always, but sometimes, um, but yeah, that's tough. I know healthcare nonprofits, you struggle mm -hmm. a lot with HIPAA. Oh, yeah. And making sure HIPAA compliance Ooh. is there. Um, you uh, see uh, some of your um, your nonprofits that deal with uh, personnel and children and clients that where you have confidentiality. Uh, you get uh, background check information back, and then you want to make sure that stays confidential, you know, of records. And mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's also just a matter of protecting the organization and um, the quality of the organization, too. Yeah. So that can be huge. Well, so in the spirit of change... Uh, in the 100th episode, um, mm -hmm. Marjorie and I have a, a little bit of announcement to share with everybody. So I hope you've been drinking in, along with us and enjoying it. Uh, so I have decided that I want to pursue pursue um, ninja training even further. Uh, and as such, uh, as much as I have loved every moment of our time together on the <laughs> show, uh, I am going to be uh, exiting stage left. Uh, taking opportunity for change myself, and so she's going to the wall, folks. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so this will this will be um, potentially my last last episode. Although uh, you never know, um, ninja training mm -hmm. does have spring breaks, so maybe I'll come back and do some of that. Uh, and in the spirit of Meg Ryan, I do not have anything else uh, coming up to me right now. Another opportunity that I'm pursuing, but there is the the uh, the hope of a new opportunity and opening myself to something new. Uh, and perhaps some of that is just spending a little more time with. Uh, my family as some of the things are shifting uh, with my kiddos right now and giving them some additional time. So I want to thank Marjorie uh, for inviting me on this crazy journey a hundred episodes ago. 100. 100 episodes. <laughs> um, and it's been so much fun. And so that leads us to, so 
what in the world does that mean for 501 Crossroads and where are we going? And it sounds like, Marjorie, we've got some uh, we've got some plans. We've got some plans. So I, because I cannot bear to think about doing this without Natalie for just like a, a while here, <laughs> um, I am going to be taking a little bit of break too. Um, I'm going to maybe occasionally post an old episode about the things that are going on in the community. You're going to see our Facebook page, Keeping Up. Um, you're not going to see weekly episodes for little while here a little sabbatical yeah we'll, we'll get you caught up on some of those great episodes that perhaps you missed or they Absolutely. were timely before but now they're gonna be timely again for exactly, you exactly because you know some things just keep coming around and around yes, they around. do so. absolutely so and i will also be looking probably for a new co-host so if you're in the st louis rich Palatine area and are interested in co-hosting 501 crossroads we maybe maybe contact me if you've got a great voice and a lot to share and i like you um <laughs> and if you bring wine that'll be on the uh that the helps, application yeah, your, your yeah. wine line selection will be uh, quite important this, in this is answer. true i can give you some tips give me a call <laughs> i will uh, accept the phone calls at ninja training absolutely so don't uh, unsubscribe just yet no nope, no nope. hang with us a little bit longer um we're gonna we'll be back um with uh, a new version a new twist and mm -hmm. and with some change we'll because call it a new season change is good yeah, change is real good. And uh, I'm uh, so grateful to have uh, changed so many things over the last two years with you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, been a big year for, or a big couple of years for both of us, I think. It and has. Just a lot of change, and, a lot um, of good things. And you know what? I've loved our audience. I love running into you sporadically throughout the St. Louis metropolitan area. Uh, it's still a little uh, humbling to have someone say, oh, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I'm like, why? Uh, <laughs> uh, so thank you. Those of you who don't like me, thanks for not telling me and, and, and bursting my ego. Um, but I do appreciate uh, all the great uh, warm wishes that we've received on social media, mm -hmm. uh, through our fan uh, email uh, list that we get. Uh, our special fans, you know who you are, the ones that keep us uh, with new, fresh ideas and topics. Uh, we love that. 501 Crossroads, of course, loves doing this with you. And uh, we're not leaving. We're just changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll take a little break to, to refresh and recharge and come back uh, with uh, something uh, better than ever. It should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the next next 100 episodes or blogs or who knows what this is going to be next. So I'm really excited to to keep uh, keep this going uh, down the road after just a little bit of a break. <laughs> That's right. So on um, on behalf of the Nonprofit Ninja, I'd like to propose a toast. A toast. A toast to 501 Crossroads. A toast to all of you as our listeners who showed us that this crazy thing that we thought about um, was actually something that everyone needed yeah. way more than we realized uh, for humbling us uh, with your listening. And thank you so much for going on this journey. And until next time, we just want to say cheers. Cheers. Oh, and remember, we're all working towards the same outcomes. I think that's what I'm supposed to say. Absolutely. <laughs>